Did you know that most AI systems can't continuously learn? Let's talk about it. So welcome back to AI Insights Innovation, where we talk about the emerging world of AI and how to make it work for your enterprise. I'm your host, David Linthicum, author, speaker, V-List Geek, and an analyst with Cube Research. Let's get to work. So this kind of came about when uh, I read um, you know, various uh, LLM builders you know, commenting on uh, LLMs or, um, you know, ChatGPT, Gemini, uh, Granite with IBM. And the was kind of taken back by the fact they said they have a shelf life. Um, and I didn't really think about it, but I guess they're right. In other words, they're trained with data that they're able to gather at a certain instance in time. And that's all they know. And that's all they can tell you. So that's why with the early days with ChatGPT, there's some augmentation going on. And we'll talk about that. Um, it would say, you know, I've been trained a year ago. And so I'm, if this is beyond a year, uh, or older than, uh, you know, younger than a year old, I don't know. And that was a limitation. And, uh, we're still kind of dealing with that today. Of course, we have retrieval, augmented, uh, generation rag, uh, and I have a show, uh, on this channel here, you can go check out about that. And the promise there was to, in essence, bring more uh, more up-to-date data, which was mixed with whatever the uh, LLM, the knowledge model, would tell you. In other words, it's responding to an answer, and it'll check what's in the knowledge base, but also check more recent information to see if they can augment the response to you. So you get more of a up-to-date response and kind of that's how it goes today if we use an llm normally it has a rag based system associated with it and it's able to go off and find uh current things uh that it's able to use and i use it for research all the time uh and it'll bring up magazine articles that may have been published a couple of days ago and that's awesome so in other words i'm getting old information old old knowledge mixed in with new knowledge uh however it was interesting to me that we don't have uh, generative AI systems, at least in the mainstream, uh, that are able to continuously learn. And so what are the issues with that? Why can't it do it? And uh, are we going to reach a point where uh, LLMs are going to be able to update themselves continuously with new information, so perhaps not even have to use uh, RAG systems uh, to augment the information that's coming back from the query or use some sort of another architecture altogether? And of course, Billions of dollars of money are getting tossed at this problem. So let's talk about where it is and what the issues are and what's likely to occur in the future. I think it's an interesting topic. I think you will as well. So traditional machine learning models are trained on static data sets. Uh, and generative AI is just an instance of machine learning. Um, so kind of keep that in mind. So ultimately... Um, you know, there's ongoing research into how to make them a lifelong learner, very much like us as people. And of course, in doing so without augmentation, such as RAG. And so this approach will allow models to update, update their knowledge and improve over time without starting over from scratch. You got to remember that if we're using a, an existing LLM and we want to retrain it with a current set of data, we have to start the training, uh, the training run from, from, uh, start from zero. Uh, if we try to mix it and match it, there's some bad things that can occur, and we'll talk about that later. So we train it based on the information or the static information we have available to us now, and then we may want to put an augmentation system like a RAG system to augment the uh, responses that are coming back to people who are leveraging it. So RAG provides us the ability to do something like dynamic knowledge integration. So the RAG models already incorporate information retrieval mechanisms to pull up-to-date information at inference time. However, and this dynamic methods allows the model to access the latest data without needing to retrain the poor model. And we're relying on that right now. So if you go out to, you know, ChatGPT, which I go out all the time, uh, it'll allow you to augment your response based on, uh, on current data searches or web searches that occur and you're, you are getting up-to-date information. So we're still, we're getting the advantage of it, but the LLMs that we're leveraging don't continuously learn to get at that. They're going to an external system to augment what they already know and even, uh, even uh, change some of the responses based on new facts and data that may emerge from the uh, use of the RAG information that's coming into the LLM. So 
Um, we have fine model tuning and updating. Fine model tuning with new data can help, and this is where people are moving to right now with this continuous learning, can help them adapt to emerging needs and knowledge. And combined with RAG strategies, this model could be periodically updated, incrementally train the system. And that's what we're relying on these days. And that's why we have versions of LLMs that come out. And we're kind of dependent on looking at the version of LLM, understanding that that's where the core information is going to be found or the time when it actually ingested that data and, the t and it built the knowledge models and discovered the patterns. And while RAG is a, a good assistant to um, making that information up to date, it's not infallible. In some instances, people are not getting the accurate information from RAG when if the model was trained that very day, in other words, it finished training just b before we used it, uh, it would be much more uh, advantageous for us, to, for us to use because it would have access to all information that we needed, updated information that, that we needed, and be able to manage, <clears throat> manage that knowledge uh, through the interfaces that it's able to provide and not having to complicate it with reaching out to another uh, data access system, which is really what RAG is. So the issue is that continuous training presents challenges. Um, so, and, and by the way, we've been pulling this off for years. I remember doing continuous training management back in the 80s when I was working on some of the list systems, things like that. And it was very difficult to do, and, but we were dealing with small amounts of data, small amounts of training information that went into it. And so doing something like that wasn't that much of a stretch. It was expensive. But, you know, the, the systems were so small and so tactically focused that um, those sorts of things were, were fairly easy to engineer. Now we have LLMs that, like I said, they're built with the entire knowledge of the internet and perhaps the entire, entire knowledge of humankind or the entire knowledge of a particular business or company, which is gobs and gobs of information. It takes a tremendously long time to train those systems and uses a lot of processor power and GPU power. So if we're able to do this, we're able to, uh, we need to be able to do, um, you know, manage the computational resources to make it, make it reasonably cheap and also ensure model reliability and stability and address you know, any ethical concerns that have to be dealt with you know, that's related to data use. Anytime we use data and anytime we're building a knowledge model, AI systems, we have to kind of uh, talk about the ethical impacts of some of those things. And so it's kind of a problem that's left to be solved. And we do have instances where people are moving forward to solve these things now. We'll go over them later in the video. But let's look at the problems that we need to focus on in order to get this resolved. So if we are able to transition from a static to a continuous learning uh, system for generative AI models, uh, what are the challenges that, uh, that, that face us? Well, we have a few of them. Number one, catastrophic forgetting. Uh, this is when the primary challenge of continuous learning is where the model loses its ability to perform well on previously learned tasks when it's trained on new tasks. And so in other words, this is kind of a, a problem with AI systems that been around for a long time. If I try to train an existing knowledge model based on new information, I may have problems with the previous information, the previous training uh, that's dropped out of the system uh, called catastrophic forgetting. I've heard it called other things as well, but I think that's a good definition of it. And this happens because traditional neural networks tend to override existing weights uh, and update it when updated with new information. And this makes them unreliable. So in other words, if we're doing this, there's a risk that we're going to have unreliability into these AI systems. Unless we test them thoroughly, we may be suspicious uh, in terms of their ability to come up with the right answers. In other words, we're making it dumb uh, by doing it. In other words, we're trying to make it smarter, but it's dropping uh, other information that it should retain. Uh, which is going to be a problem. Resource constraints, another issue. Continuous learning requires ongoing computational resources and infrastructure. Everything in AI is going to be, you know, gobs of GPU and gobs of memory and gobs of storage. You know, this is no different. This includes challenges related to data storage, processing power, real-time accessibility. And so there is going to be the trade-off. So if we're going to do this continuous learning, and it is going to be possible, uh, you know, dollars to donuts, it's going to take a lot of processing power, a lot of resource, resources, which means a lot of money, which means we go, okay, is this going to be worth us going through, is, you know, is, is the juice worth the squeeze, which everybody tells me these days. And so we have to figure that out. Data and uh, data privacy and security, uh, continuously updating models with new data raises significant privacy and security concerns. Uh, again, handling and integrating new data often in distributed or decentralized ways, they have to comply with privacy regulations. And so 
data sovereignty issues, uh, HIPAA compliance, uh, other you know medical health compliance outside the country. We have to deal with that. Scalability of learning algorithms. Um, learning algorithms can uh, need to handle the vast and heterogeneous data encountered in the real world, and this can be a bit of a challenge. So in other words, we're going to be continuously updating our knowledge model. Uh, the data has to be in a good, consistent ca uh, way, and it has to be able to scale up and learn the information as it's made available to it. You have to remember we're continuously learning, and you think about the whole of the internet and how much data is generated on that on that massive concept. You know, each and every day, this is a knowledge model that would be basically uh, gathering that data and learning what they can from the data. And by the way, this may be associated with something that's a little bit more tactically focused, like a one business or an industry or you know even an application. And it becomes a little bit more easier to solve when we're doing that. Um, but I think everybody's looking here to get to a more simplistic model with LLMs so, so they can have a continuous learning framework. Uh, maintaining model quality and accuracy. These models continuously learn from new data. Maintaining the quality and accuracy of the output becomes difficult. And this is the big problem. So in other words, if, we, if, we, if we're not able to retest this thing continuously as well, and so the concern would be is that we're going to pollute the knowledge model with some erroneous information, which is going to cause uh, the knowledge model to produce erroneous results, which is going to be a bit of a problem. So effective mechanisms for validation, testing, quality assurance are essential to making this happen. So we just can't put this there and assume it's working. Uh, we're going to have to put tests in place. And you're not going to test everything. So you're going to do some, some unit testing on the information that goes in versus the information that goes out to see if we have an accuracy issue. I suspect as we get, if this becomes a reality, more of a reality, it's, we're doing some of this now, that it's going to get easier and easier and easier and these mechanisms will start to show up. And then finally, balancing exploration and exploitation. Continuous learning requires models to explore new data and opportunities while exploiting existing models. And uh, you know, shrinking this balance is challenging as focusing too much on exploration can lead to inefficient learning, while too much uh, exploitation can result in models becoming outdated or irrelevant. So I did do some research out there uh, to see what's occurring now as far as solving this problem, or even if it's something people are interested in solving. Uh, I think there's value in solving this because the ability to deploy models that are able to continuously learn in an accurate, reliable, and scalable way or just going to be more valuable to us just because we're able to produce um, better results than if we're leveraging, you know, an LLM that was built a year ago and it's augmented by uh, rag-based data. Um, it obviously emulates continuous learning, but it's not really continuously learning. So let's look, look at uh, what's out there right now where there's continuous learning techniques. Researchers are developing algorithms and architectures that enable models to learn new information incrementally without forgetting previously acquired uh, knowledge. So the AI engineers, the AI scientists, people, you know, the PhD crowd, you know, is off trying to figure this out. I'm sure there's lots of dissertations being written. I saw a few of them when I did the research here as to how this can be done. And it's a bit of a trial and error experimentation. And again, the theater of the, th of the thinking, theater of the innovation is going on out there. Also, meta-learning approaches. Meta-learning or learning to learn equips models with the ability to adapt quickly to new tasks with limited data. And this approach is able to help address the needs of continuous learning by making models adaptable and flexible. Non-stationary environment, environment adaption studies are looking at how, to gener how generative models can better adapt to changing data distribution over time, which is an essential for continuous learning in these, in these environments. So it's becoming dynamic. Things are changing. Your environment's changing. And it's able to learn from its environment. In other words, we're not just feeding it constant information, but it's looking outside itself and is able to find new information and is curious about new information. So it's able to change the way it's able to find and, and um, consume information based on the way in which we gather and store information, which is going to change over time. So we don't have to keep adapting it and keep having to work ways in which we can get new data forms into the system, it's able to go out there and uh, find them and leverage them if they're needed. And then finally, environment interaction. Uh, there's work on developing models that interact with their environment to learn continuously. And this includes uh, observations and feedback. And this is akin to reinforcement learning. 
uh, but with focus on generative capabilities. So a lot of this stuff goes on. So these research efforts are out there, and it'll be interesting to see, you know, which one of them gain purchase, as right now we're doing things the way we know that works. And by the way, generative AI, if it's just going to deal with uh, versioning and uh, uh, static learning mechanisms that are augmented by RAG, I think we're going to be perfectly fine. But I think if we move and advance the AI world, this is going to provide a benefit. And so everybody, since AI is such a high stakes, you know, everybody's off working on this problem. I don't blame them. So will this happen? Uh, well, it's, if so, when? Well, it's happening now, aspects of at least the ideas are. As far as whether it's going to happen in the, the mainstream AI space, where it's going to be built into new releases of LLMs, I think probably so. I just think uh, there's so much money being tossed at this space. Uh, you know, people are, are going to see the value of this. And now there's a huge competition in LLMs. We talk about it here. You know, every week I'm getting a notification of some LLM was just released. We have IBM's Granite that's just released and Google's Gemini and, uh, you know, OpenAI stuff. And it's just going to keep on going and going and going. You know, so much so that uh, it becomes you know, commoditized after a while. And so what do you do when something's about to commoditize? Well, you put in some sort of a special feature that your competitors don't have, and this would be such a special feature. Something of a continuous learning system, we don't need RAG, we're able to provide better quality responses from the utilization of our knowledge model, our foundational model, or LLM, and therefore you should use ours, uh, which I think is just the way things are gonna progress. So there's so many people interested in this right now, I do see it a problem as a problem that we should be solving uh, to get to a better state and using AI systems. Lots of money out there in the R&D world they're going to be spending on this. And so I guess wait and see to see who's going to uh, produce the most accepted version of this technology. Well, that's all I have for you this week. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, check out our other stuff at DuckCube Research. We're doing lots of stuff. Check out our events. Uh, check me out on LinkedIn. Happy to uh, have you there. Also, check out my courses out on LinkedIn Learning. Um, love to see you use that resource as well. So until next time, you guys stay safe. Cheers.